Well, hi guys, welcome to the session. My name's Paul, this is Plan Z. Excuse me, let me get that game put down. Hopefully you're very well. Welcome to the second of 40 videos that's going to be covering all 20 of the guitar amplifiers in GT1000. I will be covering the bass as well, um, but uh, these sessions at the moment are focused on the guitar. In this session, we're going to be looking at the rectifier. I've got five patches set up. Now, patch one is duplicated in patch five using GT1000 cab sims, and patch one is using a dynamic IR from two notes, where I'm using a Mesa Boogie 412 6L6. Um, now, before we get into it, uh, let me just come out of there, actually. We've got them... Uh, two stereo patches, so let me just bring up a game. So in this one I've got the gain on a medium gain cranked a bit. Okay. Um, this one is a stereo patch where I've got the gain less. even lower if I want. Let's bring up the gain part of the neck. Okay, going to be covering the wets that I've got in there as well when we get to them. I've got a patch here where I've got the sag cranked on a on uh, on a medium and high gain, where we've also got a JC120. And some changing wets. We start out with a shimmer. When we get back to our uh, Mesa Boogie, we're on a... I can't remember what it is, if it's a plate or a hall. Okay, so let's just come out of there. But let's start off in patch five, which is the same as patch one, where I'm going to talk to you about um, the signal chain, the EQ, and how the amps are dialed in. So in this patch, we're using exclusively GT1000. There's no wet dry going on. I'm running a side chain instead, and we're running into the same output. So, uh, and I quite like running wets into a separate cabinet. And uh, but in this case, I'm going to route things the way that you might be if you were using your main outs. So uh, before we get into the cabinets, we need to start on the outputs. Now I've made a change to my output. Uh, I'm going to go to sub out because uh, and just pretend we're in your main outs. Uh, I'm going to go to the EQ where I've got a stereo link on, and what I'm doing I'm taking one out of the lows, one out of the highs. I take one dB on a Q of two of two K, and then I bump the level by one. Okay, um, and that's shaping the EQ curve on the way out. All right. Now um, I could do my low cut in there, but I'm. I've got basses and things going through here, acoustic guitars, other stuff, and uh, I like to try and keep that low cut clear, and I'll do it within the patch, as you'll see. Then on the cabinets, we're set to the uh, 412.3, which is the Mesa Boogie from the 320 update. Uh, we've got a 121 on the left, uh, in the middle, in the middle, 100, and on the right, we've got... A SM57 in the middle, three centimeters off axis, 100. Let's go back up. Let's boost it. Nice. Okay, so we come down here, we've got our side chain, which is where our verb is. We can have it on a short trail and uh, we're just we've just got a plate on here okay uh, we'll go a bit more into this into the wets in the other patches this one's just a simple one so with the EQ remembering what we did to the output I then deal with uh, 
the EQ in a cascading way where I deal with the lows here, low mids, and then if I want to boost lows, I do it after the amp and I deal with the highs and the mids and shape the amp here. We'll go into the amp after the EQ. Let's understand the EQ, it's really important. Now, if you're a metaler and you're used to using graphic EQ, you might be like, oh, I don't like this guy's videos, he's not using graphic EQ. Well, I'd like to introduce you to parametric EQ because it's very, very powerful. And the graphic EQ we've got in the GT1000 is all right, but it doesn't have anywhere near as many frequencies to choose from as our parametric EQ. And if you want to understand how to use them, I did a, a session a couple of weeks ago about understanding EQ where I, where I teach you how to hunt for frequencies and how to use a parametric EQ like a pro. So, um, yeah. So if some of this isn't making sense, reference the video that I'll put in the link in the description below about understanding EQ. Um, people have found it quite useful, and hopefully you will. Now, let's get this mess of boogie sounding how we want it. So in our first parametric EQ, I'm dealing with the low lows. So everything's a zero here, and I'm taking out surgically frequencies that are going to boom in cabinets and things, okay? So here I found a boomer. It's a subtle one at 160, and it's not a problem if you're not boosting the low end after the amp, but I'm boosting the low end, and I had to pull it out a little bit, okay? Uh, here, I'm pulling out 250, uh, which I needed to do either way, and then I do the low cut at 125. Then here, we've got no change again. Min minus six on a Q of 16, 315 hertz. 500, Q of 4, 6, minus 6. Now, I want to just draw your attention here. If you're using a graphic EQ, you'd be taking out a lot more, maybe on a Q of 2, yeah? But um, because I've dealt with the lows in a surgical way, I can retain the body of the tone. So, you know, 500 is where the meat of your tone is with most amps. Um, so I've done a slightly wider cut here than I would normally do on a Fender, let's say. Uh, even on the Plexi, I had it here on a Q of 4. I think, if I remember right. Sorry, Q of eight, six. Oh, I'm getting in a muddle, eight. Um, yeah, but here, uh, I want to keep some of the meat of this amp. So that's what I've done there, okay? Um, no li low high cuts, obviously. Then after the amp, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one off and talk to you about the high cut. And then I want to talk to you about how flexible this can be if we set it up. Um, well, let's get to it. So here, we deal with the highs, and I do a really aggressive high cut at 4K. I'm taking out 3.15 kilohertz, uh, surgically uh, uh, 16 minus six. And then I'm doing the same at 2K. All right? Then leaving the level alone, I boost the highs. Now here I've ended up at seven, all right, um, I could have gone more if I want, um, but I, 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 I want it to sit in a certain place. Now here, this EQ here, we've got options. My tone at the moment sounds like this. Let's turn off that verb. All right, let's take off that high cut. Now we've, we could do some level here, and this is this here. Now what I want to do is, in my other patches, I boost this to nine, but when we do that, it's still quite harsh. So what I'm thinking I might do is just boost the overall level by one, and when I do that, yeah, we've got a better level. Those highs are better, and our lows have been left alone, okay? So now, we're going to shape things a little bit more. I might need to look at this low in a moment. Um, but let's just pull that back a little bit to three. Got it up to five. Look crazy, man. Uh, here, we've got a little bump to the highs happening because I'm taking out two of the level on a parametric EQ. But let's just talk about switching this and you can set that up as an assign and get a different tone um, in the same patch. I've gone a plus one on a graphic EQ and done a smiley face. So here I start cutting. I've done a little bump at 125. So I might want to watch those lows. Um, 
we'll see. Little little bump there, cut at 250, um, cut at 500 minus 3, then minus 2 at 1k, uh, minus 1 at 2k, leaving 4k flat through flat, okay? So without this EQ block on, we've got back pickup, let's pull, let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> Let's stick on a graphic EQ there. Okay, let's go to our parametric EQ. Let's, actually, let's go uh, through the three. So, without. And I've pushed the frequencies in a very different way in this EQ. I'm pushing specifically 800 hertz on a Q of 2 plus 4 dB. And then I'm getting my bite at 1.6 on a Q of 2 uh, plus 4. Now I could, if I wanted to get into kind of uh, gent territory. Bump this. I can't play gent, so and I'm drop D not as low as you guys go down to Z. Um, yeah, plaid Z. <laughs> I like it. Anyway, so um, but let's just pull that back. If you want to pull that through, so you get more of that aggressive cut, pull this 1.6 through, and you'll find it. Okay. And but watch your gain and dial your amp in. So this is how I'm set up at the moment with the EQs. All right. It's quite long. We're already, you know. 20 minutes into the video? No, 10 minutes, something like that. Okay, so let's get into the first amp. We're in a medium gain. Medium gain that changes to a high gain here in a toggle. I've got, I've tried to dial in a low gain. Now, if you don't have a GT1000 core or GX100, you won't know that we just get the red high gain channel of a Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier. They don't even special, specify which one. So there's obviously lots of different ones and we can kind of try and shape this as best as we can. But I've, I've tried to fashion a low gain in this amp here. We'll have a look at that in a minute out of what we get. But okay, so here's my medium. We've got the, the bass down at five, mid at 70, trebs at 70, presence up at 90, look. Lovely. Let's come back to the front of the amp where I've got the gain at 40. So that's quite low really, but it sounds great when it's cranked with the tube screamer, which we'll look at in a minute. Sag on minus 10. We've got uh, the resonance at five on all of the patches. I quite like what it does to the mids and I like what it does to the highs. The level here is at 70, and when we go to the high gain, it just drops by 1 to 69. The gain goes up to 80, is that? The mids get cracked, the trebs get pulled back a little bit, the present stays up where it is, but I drop all the bass off. <laughs> Now we've got a solo boost in this amp as well, which I've got set up on a sign. All right, so that's the medium high gain. That was quick, wasn't it? Um, now what we'll do is we'll, in the second session, we'll pull these amps around a little bit and see what different tones we can get out of it. But let's uh, stay focused on the patches at the moment because there's already quite a lot of different things we can do. Um, so in this one, I've gone with a gain of 10. Let's go in, uh, both pickups. Let's bring up these pots. So with the pots on about nine. I reckon we can get more. Okay, so that's the pot on full. And I really, I don't want to push it much more than that really. So what I could do is just increase the gain a bit. Yeah, I'm going to leave that there so I've got something that's at least close to clean. 
we've got a JC120 setup in the other patch. So here again, I've stayed with the SAG. So we've got the kind of SAGless amp um, resonance again at five, level up at 80, I think that is. But the bass is at 47, the mids are at 44, the trebs on 62, and the presence cranked. <laughs> Let's give it a bit of verb. Let's give it a bit of chorus. We've got a chorus in here as well. We'll just scroll through the levels so you can see them. Okay, so that's that patch. And what we're going to do in a little minute, we're going to shoot that out in a little jam. Now let's go to the patch that's next to it, patch four, where we've got the sag on um, in our rectifiers. And I've taken the same strategy here with the EQ, so we won't cover that again. We can save time. Um, let's just have a little look at what's happening here. Now here we're using a wet dry with two notes here and GT here, using the same cabs, but using a blend um, and medium in the middle 100 for the mics, okay? Blend A. Let's turn on the verbs. So this is the one with the sag in it. Let's turn up the verb. Pull back those verbs. Let's go and have a little look at the amp. How is the amp set up? So I've got the gain slightly less here at 35. The sag is up at 10. The resonance at five. A level at 70 again. But we've got more of the bass. Mids at 60, so that's a bit less on the mids. Ha, up at 70 on the high, so that's about the same place if I remember right. And the presence is the same at 90. <laughs> Now I've got a high gain, we change the high gain, and I just bump the mids a little bit, pull the highs back a little bit, presence remains the same. The gain remains the same. Pulling back the tone pop, pulling back the gain pop a bit. Reverb set up to change between Hall and Shimmer when I change to the JC120. So let's go to the JC120. Okay. Now on the JC120, we're obviously going through the same cabs. We've got the gate at 50, sax resonance in the middle here. Um, the level is at 52. The bass at 45, mids at 47, trebs at 70, presence at 80, and no bright switch in this. Now I'm having that into a chorus, so we've got the JC120 flavor using the stereo chorus. Here are the settings. Note that we're in try. And then before that, so between the two, I've got a boss comp, where I've just got a sustain at 50, attack at 50, a 35 level plus 10 tone uh, using it like a, a, a mastering compressor after the amp okay uh, so 1.6 to 1 ratio very soft 30% um, dry mix coming through <laughs> So um, that's this 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 patch in a nutshell. I have got access to the synth, so let's just bring on. We'll also have some drives and things in here. Let's see what I've put in. Let's go to the. Okay, so we've got a tube screamer in here with our massive boogie. Yeah, 
there. So I've got the gain down at zero. I might just have that come up a little bit. <laughs> neck pickup so uh yeah that's got a level of 70 tone off at four you see the drive at 40 there bottom in the middle and i have two percent uh, two coming through on the dry mix so you can feel it but not hear it um that's that and then down here what have i put Ooh. <laughs> Settling around 30 with the gain around 40 again. Interesting. Minus 10. And I'll be doing the same in this side here, okay, at the moment. Unless I get a problem. But my lows are being well managed here, so I shouldn't need to adjust that. Yeah, okay. So let's leave that like that and save that patch uh, with the verbs off. Now then, let's go to the last two patches that we're going to look at in detail, um, and I'll try to keep it as brief as possible. These are both stereo patches, so patch 2, which is the one we're in, has the gains at 30, and we're dialed in with none of the sag again in both of these patches, okay? Got the level up at 71, and on this note, that 71 and 70. The difference is, because I'm pushing the mids a bit more on this side, okay? And that's how we're set up there. And on this side, I'm just not pushing the mids as much, all right? And I'm probably pushing the highs a bit more on this side, okay? So there's some difference in the amps, how they're dialed in. The EQ sets and everything will be very similar. So this is where we get to with a 30 on the gain, neck pop, uh, back pickup full. Let's pull that back. Go to both pickups. Let's go to the neck. Let's go stereo. Two gain stages in both, so here we've got a, a medium to low gain, and in the other patch we'll have a medium to high gain, but we'll talk about that in a mo. Uh, just staying in the medium gain here, let's just quickly talk about the wets, where, um, actually before we do, I've got a fuzz in here, and I'm going to be using that. quite an aggressive way hopefully um, but we're set to 80 on the level uh, 120 on the gain so we're really spitty uh, plus two on the tone uh, the bottom here is at plus seven two of the dry mix coming through and I've just dropped the bottom here for my I usually have it up of somewhere between 10 and 14 for most amps but here we're at, we're at seven okay now as we come into the wets here, it's the same as in the plexi, all of the patch twos will be the same. We've got a spring reverb here, which I uh, will cover as we go through these videos. Let's turn this on. Now it's on with a uh, space echo. That When the heel is back on the expression switch, we've got zero feedback. So if I add... It's just giving some very subtle, very low level stereo movement, okay? Right, so, but I can crank it. Yeah. 
So and I think what we're going to do in session two is we might change this around. We'll see how it sounds on each of the amps, but I might take this XOD that the delay is going into, bring it down here, try it in front of the amp, um, and then here where we've got a CE1, I'll turn on the preamp and we'll get distortion that way and see how we get on. So that's how we set up at the moment. But here I just want to note the dry mix is coming through at 50 and the bottom is just knocked off a bit, okay? Um, and there are the settings for that. That little lock goes into a stereo compressor again, okay? So let's just pull all of that back. Um, so now we understand that path. Sorry if I'm going quickly, I'm trying to do this video in under 40 minutes. <laughs> Good luck with that, Paul. Here we go. So we've got all the same setup, only the effects will be different. Um, and we're driving the amps a bit harder. So we've got the gain up at 70. So let's hear that on the back pickup. <laughs> Drive the OD1. Okay, so we've got the OD1 on there. The back end will be set up the same way here. Just note here, I've got the I, I pushed the level slightly harder there. Let's just have a look. Yeah, no, so yeah, I did. I found I needed to push this slightly harder than I did the Tube Screamer. So just a little note to that. With the Tube Screamer, I think I ended up around 72, 73, something like that. Um, now, uh, so our amps are set up the same way, uh, only the gain is being driven harder here, and the mids are being driven slightly harder than in the low gain. So here we were at 70 in the lower gain one, and here we're up at 80, all right? Now in the wets, Got a couple of things going on in here. We've got a bit of a phaser there. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. And then we've got in our wet channel here, we've got a hall that uh, can start out short. Or we can have it nice and nice and wet. Can if I want introduce the delay. I'm just going to catch the end of my note and then disengage it. Now it's a reverse delay that when the heel is all the way up or the toe is all the way forward, I've got it oscillating, and when I pull the heel back we come back to zero. And I'll use it in a couple of ways. Um, and hopefully we'll hear that in this jam. What I do want to just look at here, let me just check. I think I might want that at 125, so it just cuts through a little bit more. Let me just check something here. It's just something I noticed earlier. Cause, yeah, because I'm cutting this there. So I'm going to leave that at 125 there so it cuts through a little more. Okay, so this is that patch. Let's just save that if that's a change. So what we've got now is the last patch, which is two notes cab M set up the same way as the first patch we looked at, okay? So that's our fifth patch. <laughs> Nice. So let's get um maybe let's get let's get the JC120 on the case and let's take our first loop. So let's go to both pickups, maybe. Yeah, that sounds nice and pretty. <coughs> and let's start out pretty and see if we can't get all fat and heavy.
right. Gonna go to the stereo patch now where they're driven a bit harder. Stick on the OD1. Take that as a loop. Okay. Now let's maybe go back to our Pass 5 GT1000. Stick on our boot. Um, and just come in nice and dry and hard. Three, four. Do the same thing now, but with two notes. Three, four. And what I noticed there straight away is the highs. There's something there in the high mids. Bear me a mark. Could it be that I need to push there a bit wider? I'm going to leave that push at 125 for a moment on a slightly wider cue, slightly less, just to shape it slightly differently. Actually, I'm not. I'll tell you why. Because my 800 push is there, and I like that 800 push. I'm going to leave it as it is for a minute and listen to the video back on YouTube and see how I feel about it. Sometimes in the room, things can feel slightly different. Or sound slightly different. It's quite intense in the headphones I've got and those highs. Maybe they were about right where they were. We'll see. So uh, what we've got is that and that. Let's crank this bad boy on. Let's get back into it. Uh, three, four. <laughs>
now Actually you know what, let's stay in this patch Okay, I'm gonna end that session there. I did it, under 40 minutes. Okay, so there we heard in a live jam, live looping, warts and all, the weakest link is me, I think. The tones in the room sound really quite good. Really good, in fact. And I'm enjoying how that sounds as the first session on this. The second session, I'll push the amps in a slightly different way. Let's see how we get on. If you want to hear them dialed in with specific settings, I've never played a Mesa Boogie, so. so I'm trying to dial this in from watching videos online and listen to actual rectifiers and see how they sound and try and get as close as I can. Um, so if you have a better way of dialing them actually in, in the amp settings, let me know in the comments below. If you want to hear a particular effect through it in the wet or whatever, let me know a particular drive in front of it let me know we can feature it in the next video hopefully I covered in there how it sounds and exactly how I set it up more or less you know everything before the wets a bit hazy on the wets I'll catch you a bit later take care bye bye